Welcome to the Big Tech Gut Check here on Scrolling to Death. Today's episode is sponsored by Bark Technologies. The thing is, we're still learning as parents what healthy and safe tech for kids looks like. I am so glad that companies like Bark are talking to parents and creating technology that really works for families. So please check out the Bark phone, the Bark app, and the soon-to-be-available Bark watch. Links are in the episode notes. But now let's get into the updates for the week of September 23rd, 2024. I'm going to start with Snapchat today, and they were in the news for a few reasons. Number one, they announced a partnership with Google Gemini to further boost their My AI chatbot. So if your child is on Snapchat, I would just recommend getting into their settings and turning off the My AI. There are reports from all over that the AI in Snapchat is recommending dangerous and inappropriate information to children, like telling a teenager how to set the mood for a sexual encounter with an adult man. Second thing going on with Snapchat in the news, more predators have groomed and sexually assaulted children that they met on Snapchat. This is happening every single day, never fails. So this is a reminder to talk to your kids about who they can and cannot trust online. Even if Snapchat is telling them it's their friend, it's probably not. Next up, Snapchat has announced that they will be offering older teens, 16 and 17 year olds, the ability to post content publicly to a larger list of people than just their friends or followers. This seems counterintuitive to keeping teenagers safe, but Snapchat is saying that these public stories from 16 and 17 year olds will get limited distribution and they'll see minimal metrics like like counts. And parents should be able to see if their kids have an active public story in the Snapchat family center. So please check to see if your 16 or 17 year old is using this public facing content feature. Also, if your child is younger than that and may have potentially lied about their birth date because public facing content increases their risk for cyberbullying and predation and sexual exploitation and a lot of things that are bad. Last update for Snapchat, they are currently testing a more simplified version of Snapchat. There's no timeline on when this will launch yet, but features will include a decluttered home screen of the app, making it more easy to navigate to the main areas. Spotlight and stories will be unified into one feed, so bringing together snaps from friends and snaps from the public in the same feed. Next up, let's talk about screens at school and let's focus on phones first. More and more states are rolling out executive orders or advisement to schools telling them to ban or limit access to phones. Virginia, California, Florida, Indiana, Louisiana, South Carolina have all issued guidance and we expect more states to follow. Pennsylvania recently allotted millions of dollars in grants for schools to purchase lockable pouches to store students' phones. Delaware recently allocated $250,000 for schools to test lockable phone pouches. Minnesota and Ohio will require schools to adopt policies to limit cell phone use next year. I'm really glad to see this movement, but personally, I feel like the guidance is a little bit soft. While states like Virginia are doing a great job with requiring a bell-to-bell phone ban, other states like mine here in California aren't being as strict with their guidance and their language. Based on everything we've learned about how phones are affecting kids at school, the ideal way to ban phones is to remove them from use from bell to bell, ideally take them off the child's person in the morning and give them back at the end of the day, or alternatively lock the phone up in an inaccessible pouch like the yonder pouch during school hours. The key is no access, even in between classes and at lunch which is difficult in some states like mine here in California, where we are still allowing students to be able to access them in case of an emergency. Therefore, we cannot lock them up. So if you're an educator and administrator or just an interested parent, I recommend you access the Administrator's Toolkit, which was created by Fair Play and the Phone Free Schools Movement. It is the best guide for how to implement a bell to bell phone ban and has lots more research around why we need to be doing this. So we've covered phones. Let's talk about the next challenge that kids are facing in schools regarding tech, and that is the school-issued devices. Listen, we thought our kids would be digital super learners if we give them this amazing technology to learn from in the classroom. Turns out, we screwed up. The massive amounts of screen time are affecting their moods, their eyesight, the curvature of their spines. The educational apps they're using turned out to be not so educational. They are engaging and gamified, but that doesn't help kids actually learn. Test scores have plummeted. The devices are unsafe. Kids are getting access to pornography, to social media, to predators, all of the things they shouldn't be accessing, especially in a learning environment. And these devices, like the iPad, which is used in nearly half of the schools, is designed to maximize user access and engagement for one reason only, and that is to collect, use, and sell the user's data, our children's data. 
the design of these products render them inherently dangerous for use by children, and the school filters and monitoring software are not fully effective in preventing harmful exposures from happening to our kids. So I think a lot of parents are coming to here. Parents like me are opting out. We're saying, no, our kids aren't using devices at school, especially when, like me, you find my child being served a self-harm video on their school-issued device. And parents like me are getting met with resistance from our school districts. Tech is so deeply woven into lesson plans and testing that schools are unable to provide a paper-based learning option. How do you turn an interactive game into a worksheet, especially when schools have taken away printers and ink and paper from teachers? Some districts are being slightly flexible and working with families, especially through the younger grades, but not all districts are willing, and there are beginning to be lawsuits filed across the nation by families against the schools. The Wall Street Journal recently covered this movement by parents to opt out of school tech, which I'll link to in the episode notes. And I'm also keeping you updated on my journey to opt out of school issued tech, mostly on the Scrolling to Death Instagram page. And I've added resources on my website on the resources tab. So you can see the email I use to request opt out and seven questions I recommend asking your school about tech safety. Okay, last update for the week. Instagram made a big announcement, and that is the introduction of teen accounts with built-in protections for teenagers. I'm going to tell you the good things and then the sucky things about this update. The new teen accounts are private by default, meaning they have to accept a follower in order for the other user to see their posts. Only people they're connected with can message them. There are sensitive content restrictions. They get a recommendation to leave Instagram if they've used it for 60 minutes that day. And sleep mode will be turned on between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m., which will mute notifications overnight and send auto replies to DMs. There's also a supervision feature that allows parents to see who their teen is chatting with, set daily time limits, and a few other options. So here's the sucky part. Teens who are 16 and 17 can just turn off teen accounts without parental permission. And any teen at any age can opt out of the supervision feature. And teens can still lie about their age and just use Instagram as an adult, avoiding any restrictions at all. So the protections are minor and unenforceable. And this rollout was so embarrassingly timed. The announcement of teen accounts hit the news outlets on September 17th. On September 18th, there was a congressional hearing to mark up the Kids Online Safety Act. COSA is a very important bill that will regulate social media companies like Instagram and force them to be safer for kids and teens. So by Instagram rolling out teen account protections one day before this hearing, Instagram is literally trying to tell parents, we got you. You don't need regulation. You know what's best for your kids, not policymakers. And I'm not exaggerating how obvious this sentiment is. Here's a quote from the head of Instagram, Adam Masseri, that was included in the teen accounts update. We decided to focus on what parents think because they know better what's appropriate for their children than any tech company, any private company, any senator or policymaker or staffer or regulator. So Meta is saying you don't need regulation. Parents can just use the tools we're providing to protect kids. But hey, Adam, how well has that worked over the past decade? We have let you and big tech move fast and break things, and those things have been our kids. We need to stop trusting their word and look at their actions, which have been to avoid regulation and to avoid protecting kids at every turn in favor of their profit. That is it for this week on the Big Tech Gut Check here on Scrolling to Death. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being part of this important conversation, for educating yourself on the bad stuff online so that we can help our kids use tech for good. I will catch you next week.